Hello guys and welcome back to another Rig Rundown episode where I bring you some of the biggest, baddest rigs in Australia. Now this is a very special episode, one that I've been trying to organise for a long time. It's from a man who I've been watching on YouTube for years and years. It is no other than Ronnie Dahl's Cruiser. Hey! All right guys, so we're here with Ronnie Dahl. Finally, we've got his cruiser here. So not too long ago, we did the modified on the patrol. So yes. now we're doing the cruiser, which I'm pretty excited about because it's probably one of the most famous 79s in Australia, I reckon. All right, so what year is it? It's 2013. 2013, 79, you've had it since new. GXL, had it since new. Yep, bought it at Big Rock Toyota, just yep. drove straight out. And you've had it how many years? Oh, six years. Six years, all right. Yeah. So this is six years in the making. It's been a long build and it's still continuously changing, isn't it? Uh, it's kind of close to the end. Yeah. I know there'll be a lot of people laughing right now, but yeah, so it's close never to the finish, end. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they never finish, right? They never finish, but yeah, okay. I think the solution is to get something else yeah. and then build on that. Yeah, yeah. Because this is set up good now. Just a couple of things are going to change. Sweet. Starting with the front, I guess. Bull bar. This looks like it's been on here for a while. That's been on so, since 2014. Yeah, wow. And it's a, uh, what is it? It's an, it's an OL Opsilog bull bar. Yep. Light force light, so you've got some spotties here, light bars up there. Yep. Plenty of lighting. What's the winch? That is a worn winch, and I've, that's been in there for five years. Yep. Maybe even six years almost. Yeah, okay. It's just a nine and a half thousand pound. A lot of people think they're not big enough, but. but the reliability's there, of course. It, the reliability's there, but if, if I need more out of it, I'll double line it. Yep. So I have had the double line it. I guess once you, if you know how to use a winch, you can use them to their capability, I yeah. guess, like with double line and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. UHF aerial, that one's the radio, is it? This is my AM FM. Yeah. That is, I won't name the brand, but that is a crappy UHF yeah. antenna. That's something that's going to change. Yeah, okay. But you, do you run a 3DB up top somewhere as well? I do, yeah. yeah I that does same. better than this. Yeah. But it's also because it's on a roof. Yeah. It's but actually 2.2 or 2.5, yeah, actually. Okay. Yeah. I find they're better as well. Like, I use a 3DB. So everyone's like, oh, I got a 6.6, .6, good average. But you get good range on a 3 as well. Yeah, that's if it. If you've got it set up high. Sweet. All right, let's keep going around the side. Got some side lights here as well. Everywhere you look, there's a different little light bar, so all that's been done properly. Now you've got sliders and um, scrubs. They, what brand were they? Are they these, made? these are the original. This is by a local guy, yeah, on track okay. fabrication. Yep. Solid as. Yeah. A rhino hide, that's been on there like, probably like a year or something, you said? Yep, about a year. Yeah, I don't really need it, to be yeah. honest, because the car's completely scratched and dented underneath. Yep. But it looks cool, so I left it on there. It does, it's got the graphics going on. Yeah. All right, keep going, moving on the side, roof rack. Um, That's new. Got, well, the rack, is that a Rhino? It's a Rhino yeah. rack. PDP's new. With a new platform. Platform, yep. So on top, there's um, Max Tracks, solar. Yeah, double Max Tracks, just because it looks better. And yep. the new Max Tracks, they stack higher, so one of them flatter. Yep. There's a solar panel. That solar panel charges two front batteries. And on the back, got another solar panel that charges a house battery. Okay, what size is that panel? 80 watt, 80 watt. 80 watt on each. Mm. Alright, sweet. On the other side of the roof rack, there's a, a zip bag. What is that? Is ah, that's the shower tent. That's shower the tent. quick ensuite. Yep. That's the quick pitch. Quick pitch right Oz yeah, one. Sweet. Cool, cool. Alright, we'll uh, head to the tray. See Let's what's do back it. there. Alright, now looking at the back end. This is fairly new, isn't it? This is a big change and this is a big help. Yep. As in weight reduction. Yeah. I used to weigh 4.2 tonne. <laughs> that's <laughs> just alright, because I used to. Two. Used to weigh 4.2 tonnes. So time. aluminium, is that what you're saying? Complete aluminium. Yeah. This this tray without everything inside it, this tray with the toolboxes, the rear drawer, and the water tank, which is 70 litre poly, yeah. 180 kilos. There you go, you're left with two blokes. 180 <laughs> kilos, yeah. That's insane. So you've got toolboxes all the way around, yep. water tank under there. So here's just deflation straps, yep. uh, you know, like lubricants. Yep. The other side is water pump uh, and just a bit more storage yeah. in here. On the back. Central locking as well. Yeah, everything central lock, that's awesome. So that's a recovery drawer. I can just notice how clean it is. <laughs> yeah, the seals, because you've just been up, up north, haven't you? The seals are good on this. Yeah. You can see here, like you can see the seal mark. Yeah, yeah. Now the seals are really good, and I've actually thrown dirt in here because, you know, there's a yep. shovel and stuff. But no, that's a decent size drawer. Sealed up really And underneath, good. is there a winch? Ah, yes, there is, yeah. 
Uh, you're like, oh, I didn't know that was there. You've a never real used inch. it. <laughs> I've used it twice. Oh, have you? Okay. Once because I just wanted to use it. Yeah. I could have, I should have snatched them out instead. Yeah. But the second time, I actually needed it. All right, in the top, you obviously just, you're still using a tray back, so you haven't gone a full canopy. Is that a weight thing? It's a weight thing, and to be honest, if I was not filming, all we would have in the back here is probably just the angle. Yeah. And just camping gear. Yeah. Okay. And spare tires. You've that's got it. some fake grass in there. It looks pretty nice as well. You yeah, fake grass. Up. That's more for my swag. Yeah. Just laid out. Yeah. Um, is the Land Cruiser handbrake. <laughs> just sits in the driveway, keeps it rolling away. <laughs> that's it. One spare now because yep. only carrying one allows me more room here, as you can see, yeah. but also reduces 60 kilos of weight. Yeah, okay. The new angle fridge. That's just come out, eh? Yeah. What do you got that for? Um, bit of party offs. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback to that. Do you have party ice with you? Because that's a lot of freezer. A what? Party ice. What's that? Party ice. Party ice? Yeah. Ice blocks. Bag. Ice bag. Party ice? Yeah. I don't know what you call it that. I don't have ice blocks in there. Because <laughs> I don't drink a lot. Um, water tanks as well. So they're 220, so 40 litres just sitting there. I hope you weren't thinking I was referring to something else. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> ice blocks. Oh, the ones that are like lolly ones. No, no. To cool yourself. I have them in no. there. No. You get a server, you get like the party ice bag. Ice bags. Party ice. Who on set knows what he's talking about? He doesn't know. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about? So it's like ice what blocks. Ice bag is. Actual ice blocks. Yeah, yeah. For, for putting in a drink. Party ice. Oh, I don't know what it's called party ice. It's called frozen water, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> frozen water. <laughs> I've since learnt what party ice is, eh? it's the ice bags. There is actually ice in here. I, so, I freeze ice in bottles. So there's no issues having this outside of a canopy, like it's in the elements. The other angle fridge which I had, which was a silver version, the exact same thing, yep. except for just, on this, just a few changes on it. Yeah. That was in the, kicking around in the back for three years and people kept asking me, oh, how do they go in the back? And what I say to them is, I don't recommend you put it in the back because I don't know what they recommend. I don't want to be that guy that tells yeah. you to put it in the back, but it's, they go fine. Yeah, okay. And they haven't said anything to me about putting it in the back. Yeah. So they know where it goes. Mm. There you go. So they're, they're not, haven't raised any concerns. that's the only one you're running? Yeah, um, obviously when I bring a camper trailer, there's one in that. Yeah, sure. Cool. So fridge freezer. Yep. Uh, fridge and freezer, same time. Sweet, all right. Keep moving around, obviously another toolbox here. And Project Black. Ah. I'll have a look at that. That's Project obviously Black. a half canopy you've got there, so. It is, but it's not really a canopy. No. So let's go to the opposite side first, because you need to see what's in there. That's yep. the boring side, and then you understand this side. No, I'll go look Still. over there. Project Black. All right, the boring side. <laughs> the boring side, yeah. So this is a collaboration with Quick Pitch Oz and myself. So this is, yeah, AKA the boring side. Yeah. Uh, just some Milwaukee tools, which cost me an arm and a leg. First aid kit, just stuff like that. But up here we have 700 watt inverter, and up the top there, that's a B BMS 30 that manages the whole system. Yep. And the two breakers you see up there, one's for the um, inverter, one's for the PDM, which we'll get to when we get okay. to the inside of the car. So the manager 30 is running a battery. Where's the battery, the second battery like I had? Right behind here. In there. So right. underneath you'll see some old pumps. Yep. They're currently redundant. I'm working out what I'm going to do with them. Yep. This drawer comes out. Behind there's a the battery. Okay. There's a lithium 100 amp. Yep. And I find that it's enough for yeah. what I'm doing. Yep. Initially I wanted to put a 150 in, but it won't fit. Okay. So in here's just all my tools and yep. whatnot, cable ties. Great for pranks, by the way. Put them around the drive shaft of your mate's car. <laughs> yeah, we've gone beyond that one. We started cable tie um, key, keys to like um, mirrors and stuff, or, <laughs> and then we cable tie the, the cutters so they can't cut them. Oh my god! Yeah, it's all fun and games until they do it to you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Go so, check out the other side. Yeah. So this powers the other side. Yeah. All right. Other side of Project Black. The not boring side, I guess. Yeah. It's got two sides to it. Okay. I don't carry chainsaws, but you're like a warrior. I'll, I'll make up for it in. Uh, in axes. How many axes do you own? You've said this before. Oh. Uh, you had like probably over 10 in the car. <laughs> pro oh, probably, there's, there's only three in the car. <laughs> yeah, okay. Probably 15. Yeah. Maybe 14. Little collection. Yeah, little collection. Nice. Yeah. All right, business side. Business side, that's it, mate. Uh, so we have a pull out table here. Built not bought sticker. <laughs> yeah, mate. Uh, yeah. 
Sweet. And even more. Pulls out with it. That is very nice. So the whole idea, this is a one-off custom thing. You designed it. It is, but with, we designed this with the intention of um, uh, quick pitch making another one that's like a kitchen. Okay. And he is working on it and he has done a few designs. It's really cool actually. He pulls the thing out and this fridge drops down at the same time. Yeah, right. And then you got space on top here. Yep. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's amazing what he's done. But yep. this one in particular is mainly for content creation. So all camera gear and stuff in here, knives and whatnot. There's mm -hmm. actually, I've got more knives than axes these days. <laughs> in here, I normally keep my audio gear, but I, you know, got, got my sumo jet boil thing, yep. which is handy. Oh, there's my soda stream bottle, I'm looking for that. Charging all the camera. So that's um, all the power. Batteries. Oh, so you got your manager 30 up there. Yeah, that's up here. Next to the bar. Yep. Whiskey glasses, wine glass. There you go. Uh, these are the lights, which are on the other side as well. So okay. at night, less bugs. Yeah, so most of the time zero them. bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It just attracts snakes instead. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a wine rack, but at the moment we're if it's perfect. we're rocking some vodka and um, oh yeah, rum. There These two go. wines are empty. Many nights on the road, you need plenty. It's like a full bar here. That's it. And this is my custom hacked up soda stream, so it fits cut in. It. <laughs> yeah, with an angle grinder. <laughs> So that's his number one thing he takes that really isn't something standard, eh? It's, you always got to have your soda stream with you. Yeah. I find it's a beer... refreshing, isn't it? Beer intakes now. Yeah. Once he gets my age, <laughs> it's, it's hard not to put the, yeah. put the kilos on, you know? All right. Well, let's move forward to... We'll go in the engine bay. Yeah, let's do that. Sweet. All right. Now we're at the engine bay, which a little bit of work's been done to this, eh? It's been on the dyno two, three hundred times. Yeah, see it's a Toyota, so we don't have to pull the... <laughs> yeah, it has actually been on the... I wasn't car. joking about that, and I just found this out. It's been used for some R&D at PDBA. Yeah, so. this is this is a base beast that's given everyone else a tune yeah. at PDP. This thing has done over 200 dyno runs. That says something about the motor. Well, does it? Or is it just like on its way out? <laughs> Mate, you saw on the sprint, did it, it right? It does all right, all right, let's have a look. We're pretty sure it did better than a brand new one. <laughs> oh, where's your gas struts? What is this? Mate, 1995? This, this, this is reliable. <laughs> see, they, they put less stuff on them, so they're more reliable. This is heavy. Oh, good to see you clean your engine bay. All yeah, right. I did just come back from Kananara. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a Toyota and it's a diesel, which I know nothing about, but they're a, what are they, like a 5.4 litre or it's, something? It's a 5.4 litre V8 turbo diesel. Yep. Very underpowered for the size of the motor, but yeah. they're super reliable. Yep. Um, we made Torbs, he's done 300,000 in his and he does not treat his motor nicely. Yeah, right. These, we don't know how long they're going to go for yet, but they go for a very long time. Yep. We just know that. Um, some of the common issues with them are the, well, the alternator, which has been swapped out. So I've already done a couple of alternators, so we've got... That is a, common, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. they're down low. Yeah. So we've got our water sealed. So it's, it's, it's a sealed it's unit. It's cooled with water, is it? Yeah, it's just tapped into the coolant up here in the T-piece, yeah, okay. goes down, circles around, and yep. I haven't had a problem since. The air box apparently is a problem, mm -hmm. but I haven't had the issue. I just make sure I oil the, the sides of it. Yep. Right, when so I close it. it probably, so. Yeah, it might expand a bit. So cool. what's been done engine-wise? Like, it's obviously been tuned and chipped in that, but turbo's still standard and everything? Turbo standard, intercooler standard. Yep. Now, intercooler might be something I might upgrade a bit later. Spoost, it's, we capped it at 20. Yep. So these standard turbos, they do not like to go more than 20. Mm. Um, well, as a V8, there's more capacity, so 20 PSI is a lot of air in, in reality. Whereas if you cram it into a, like a six cylinder TD or something, mm. that pressure is higher because there's less volume, but you're still, you're getting a lot of air through them. Because yeah, you've, got, you've got the snorkel as well, is that Safari, is it? Or? Uh, yeah, that's a, just a normal Safari snorkel. Yeah. They, they tried to give me a, the big four inch, yeah, but yeah. I don't see the point because yeah, the, the this is a three inch yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, but the, the tune that's in it, it's a Unichip Q4. It has, uh, has four separate injector drivers, so two, two okay. banks for those. Yeah. And then it has the unit itself, it has EGT protection. So okay. if it goes over a certain amount of EGT, it will start depowering the engine. Yeah, that's clever. So it like protects it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what the numbers are with power and torque? Uh, we'll hopefully be on your screen because I just rang them to try and get it. Right. Um, the thing Put is, up on the screen what the, what the numbers are, but yeah, I mean the thing is to me like I'm not, I wasn't after numbers. Yeah. We did one with the numbers, then we detuned it because I, I wanted it to be re reliable, and that's yeah. why I kept the, the turbo standard. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't want a lot of power. I just want 
it has a lot of power. Mm. I just want it so it's reliable. Yeah, someone well, plays like it up that way, I guess. Like I do remember in part one of this video, if you haven't watched already, there's a little snippet there somewhere where he was looking at doing an 80 series and possibly LS swapping it. Yeah, I was yeah. gobsmacked when I heard you say that. Yeah, that was way back in the day, that years was ago. Seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Only seven years ago. Yeah. All right, other than that, dual batteries in here. You obviously yeah. got there's a two in there to run winch and stuff, and then you've got your lithium in the back. Yeah, um, two crankers to run all the lights yeah. and the winches, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, they draw a lot of current. Um, oh, I probably should mention with the unit ship, I do have five different tunes. Oh, like, okay, yeah. Like Perf diesel tunes. Um, they're the ones that this has done 200 dyno runs to, to, yeah. to produce. First See, one's daily driver. Yeah. Second one is off road, it's like low range. Yep. And the third one is towing. The fourth one is high idle, so if I want to air up, because you can hit the high idle button, but it switches off as soon as the car senses it moves. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Mm. And then I'll, I'll do that for rock hopping as well, 1000 RPM, feet it sits, off the pedal, yeah. it just goes over it. And then, of course, the factory tune is number five. And you know, if you're driving along, you want to feel like what it used to feel like. <laughs> tune five. Some of the past. Sweet, that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. right. Well, we'll jump inside, I reckon, and see all the bits and pieces in there. There's a lot going on in the interior, so um, we'll get in there and have a look. Let's do it. All right, we're inside the vehicle, and um, the this office. is where you spend a lot of time, I'm sure. Oh yeah, spend a shitload of time. <laughs> hours and hours. All right, try and bang through this as quick as you can, because there's a lot going on, but right. it's, all, it's all for a purpose, isn't it? Everything does something. It is, it is. Now, I'm probably going to, there's a few things that are going to change. So, I'm going to upgrade a drone soon, so I'm going to have my spare iPad left over. I'm actually going to ditch these units yep. and have it on an iPad instead. Yep. Just because I hold the power better and I can use it for more things. Yep. Uh, there is wires going everywhere, it's a bloody mess. So, I've got my usual content creation you know, GoPros up here. I have this mic here, but I usually use the lapel. That's what this one here is for. Yep. Just, I know people are going to want to know what these wires are for. Yeah, yeah. So that lapel means it's the mic on your body yeah. rather than getting the Yeah, because the cab's so noisy. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the V8 and the yep. exhaust note and all that. This is my center console. <laughs> <laughs> A little bucket from Bunnings. Four dollar bucket from Bunnings, I painted. I think I spent more money on the paint. Yeah. Um, this is my second radio because I had a second vehicle mounted radio, but it was so shit. Mm. You're beeping that out, right? Yeah. Right. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. So I'm now using a GME 5 water yep. as a handheld, which I can go in and outside the vehicle with. Yeah, and that, that's better than the vehicle mount one I had before. Yeah, right. Now, the, my main one's still pretty good. Um, this is the Icon 400. I've had that for quite a while. Yep. But I'm probably looking to change just to like a two GME units, I reckon, because yep. I've found if you have two different types of radios that interfere with each other, yeah, okay. so it's either get another ICOM or it's just get all different yep. GMEs because I've got the handhelds as well. Yep. So I'm making that decision at the moment. Um, Boost and EGT, right there. V8 Cruiser written on them, they're like branded. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's it. The main thing on this, you know, so you got smart wiring for houses, right? Mm. This vehicle smart wide, so one push illuminates the buttons. So this is where I control all my headlights and everything from. So is this like relay list system, or is it still is it this more is of a trigger to the no relay? fuses, no relays? Yeah, um, I've left it loose because I keep showing people, but it's four wires to the back. Yeah, that, okay. Those four wires do more than 16 inputs to yeah. all this. So at night when you've got the lights on, that'll illuminate, stay on. Yep. Um, so this is all my 12 volt power. The middle one's the pump, so you can cycle through them. So there's multiple switches on one. Yep. All different combos. That's how I do my um, HTX. You got the LED ring and you got the HID. Mm. I can yep. I can mix that up here um, with the light bar and that. And here's my fridge, two fridge circuits. One's on lights, one's on fridge. But you can change it up. And then all these, they're like all your um, all your camp lights. So roof light, work light. They're the two lights on the roofs. Yep. They go on. And the cool thing is. Um, at night, if I hop in my swag and I'm like, oh shit, I left all the lights in the car, press the lock button, kills all lights. Yeah, okay, so it's wired into all this system. Yeah, and if, if I need to go out for a little bit, you know, a bit of a piddle, unzip the swag, can't find my torch, press the lock key again, lock, courtesy lights come on, yeah. front and rear, because yeah. it's the tail lights. Like, oh, the, sorry, rear facing lights, uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow, technology. Mm. Smart wiring. So that's a, is that a PDP system? 
Yeah, that's the PD, PDP, the PDM. It sounds a bit PDP, confusing. PDP, PDM. Yeah. Right. Sweet. Um, power distribution module, that's yep. what it stands for. Yeah. Are these seats? These are strata Sorry. seats. <laughs> yeah, these are strata seats. I like with... how it's got armrests. Yeah. I feel like you're in a Mercedes or a bloody... You yeah, know what's funny though? Like, I'm pretty sure you would like the armrests as well. Mm. I like the armrests. The missus can't stand the armrests. Really? She'll, she'll fold it up. Is it maybe just because they're shorter? No, she doesn't like armrests, but I, yeah. I like armrests. Doing like yeah, exactly. thousands of k's, yeah, like, like just cruising. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess they fold up. Mm. No, no patrolling going on here, we just cruise. Yeah. <laughs> all right, last thing to look at is underneath. We've got suspension, fuel tanks, all that kind of stuff. Oh, so, yeah, all that stuff that keeps the car going. All right, last thing to look at is what's underneath the car. Basically, wheels, tyres, suspension, lift, tanks, all that kind of stuff that we can't see. Well, what we can see is the tyres. So what are we running at the moment? I know you do a lot of testing reviews on different tyres, so you got the yeah. Maxxis on at the moment. So How right now, you? I've got the Maxxis Razors, and that's the second set that's on there. Yeah. Because um, I had eight tyres in total, because I had two trailers. Yeah, okay. Um, so what I've done is I left those on the trailer, and left two in the back, and then I waited till they got right down, and just put them all on. Yep. I'm, I'm now due for new tyres again, because I like to get rid of them before they get beyond 50%. Yeah, same, yeah. Mm. Um, rims, you've obviously got steelies. 16 inch steelies, yep. Yeah. So you can bang them out again. Yeah. Now, some, look, alloys look awesome. Yeah. And I can't go alloy because I'll be, have to eat my own words. No, nah, I, I trust steelies more because I've, I've banged them out many times before. Yeah. Um, look, it, they do get to a point if, you, if, you, if they get damaged so much, you can bang it to get out, but you've got to take it off because otherwise you're going to destroy your hub because yeah. that will be out of balance yeah. pretty badly. Yeah. All right, diffs as well, we've got a, the widened track. So on the 79s, they're obviously skinnier at the back than they are at the front. Yeah. So is that a J-Max, looks like? This is a J-Max with the chrome molly axles. Yep. I have managed to snap one in here. Yep. Um, that's probably due to my driving. <laughs> but I didn't think you could snap them. I thought I did the diff, but it wasn't yeah. the diff. But because I snapped it, it then destroyed the diff Yeah. Okay. as well. Um, your lift, what's your overall lift? And you obviously still got leaves on the back. It's a three inch lift. Yeah just enough to fit this size tire yeah which is a 35 or 315 75 r16 yeah the lift kit that's in it is the dobinson full kit it's got the parabolics on the back there constant 400 that is the best thing to do if you want flex a bit more flex mm. and a bit better drivability in your 70 yep. but if you put too much weight on the back which i don't have anymore that's when you put them in if you've got a whole heap of weight on it stick to the normal leaves yeah I just can't handle it. Explain to people obviously the difference between the parabolics to standard ones. Obviously you can see yeah. that there's a lot more gap between leaves so yep. it's more progressive load I guess isn't it? Yeah there's less leaves and it allows it to, to droop more Yeah, and it's just like a nicer drive as well. Yeah. Um, they do get a bit noisy so you can splay happens a bit more common with um, parabolics and yeah. then once they scratch through that plastic thing, you start getting that root, 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 root. So you just got to re relocate them. But it's probably a good thing because then you go back in, you get everything checked out and you get your bushes done and everything at the same time. Yeah. Because the amount of forward driving I do, bushes always get done. Yeah, yeah. Like sure. I go through them so, so quick. Right. Uh, the front on a 70 is what doesn't flex. So yep. when people think of 70s not flexing, the rear actually flexes really well yep. with the leaf. It's the front. Okay. It's, it's, it's lack of droop. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, it's just, just the way to set up. Um, and that's all Dobson. They've got, so you got remote res front and rear shocks. Yeah. I had the rear, rear ones regassed because yep. I had them in there for a year and a half now. Uh, I am due to review them on my own channel. Yep. Um, but yeah, they've, they've been good. Like for the price they are, it's, mm. it's a bloody good kit. So this is yeah. a factory locked front and rear? Yes, yep. GXL factory rear and front. It's got a worm drive gear that comes in, pushes the pin in and then Fairly locks reliable it. Then. Yeah. Very reliable yep. to the point that when I snapped the rear axle, the locker stayed in. Yeah, and allowed me to drive home on one axle. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Mm. Uh, what else didn't we cover? Fuel tank was the last thing you've got. Ah, so we've got, yeah, we've got two fuel tanks. So standard, these come with a 130 litre rear tank, which is pretty damn good, right? Yeah. But I've upgraded that to 185 on the back. There's a Brown Davis. And then in the middle, Brown Davis do a two piece tank that's 110 litres between the axles. Yeah, right. And it's not much room under there. There must be like nah. a real long, skinny. It's shaped for the drive, yeah. for the drive shaft and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I had to rip the twin exhaust system out, uh, which gave me that awesome note. Yeah. Uh, and then go to a torque it, which I've mixed, messed around with myself a bit. Yeah. And I got a sounding like pretty. So that's pretty three good. inch away, is it? 
It's three and a half, okay. and then it goes to a three, yep. and then it goes back to a three and a half, yep. and yeah, that so gives it that note. Yeah. So it's got, Still sounds decent. It's got a resonator <laughs> as well, to keep as it legal. You, as you were telling, the challenge is <laughs> coming up very soon. I think we might do that. That's pretty much wrapped up most of the car, I think. We've, there's a lot on here, obviously. There's plenty. You've got probably six or seven build videos on your channel going yeah. through detail of different things. This is good though. You're probably going to get most of the information right yeah, here right trying now. trying to get a bit of an overview of everything. But if you want more detail, you yeah, always yeah, jump over. Check but, the channel. But this All is right. good coverage. Last thing, I'm going to jump in and take this thing for a drive. That's what I do on a lot of the rig rundowns, see how it feels. The second 79 that I've driven, and then it's time for your challenges. So get keen for that. We've got the four challenges. It's been a while since I've done a rig rundown with these because obviously being a road registered car, I do it when it's a race car, they don't make the cut. So we'll uh, take this thing for a spin and then get into them. And I'm pretty keen to see what it's going to do in the sprint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. All right, the second cruiser I've ever driven. Oh, you got long legs. Can I move the seat? <laughs> Probably can't, can I? Yeah, you can. Oh. Armrest on each side. What's not to love? And the height of this armrest is the same height as this one. So it's just, oh, I can see how you've... What did Ronnie did? He hurt... You know, when we came back from Adelaide, he did like... I don't know how many Ks in one day? 2,000. 2,000 Ks in one hit, and I can see why. It's probably one of the more comfortable cars I've been in. Just hook that up. Yeah, let's get that out of the way. It feels less top heavy than I'd, I'd imagine, you know? Like, I think, what was the last 79 I was in? Uh, Jace's one, he had the canopy, it was the rooftop. This feels a lot more stable. You know, 79s are renowned for being sort of top heavy. They're tall inside, like heaps of headroom. But this feels like the weight's been distributed properly. It's down low, forward to back's nice. Like you go over a bump, you feel, you don't feel the front or the back bouncing opposite each other. Like it, it kind of floats together, which is nice. So that just goes to show that, you know, a lot of thought's been put into the way it's been balanced and, and built. And he's had that many years of just tweaking different things in it. And it really shows the way it kind of handles the terrain. I don't mind it actually. The patrol's nice, but this is good. Give it a bit of stick here. Give it a bit of stick here, he reckons. What gear are we in? We'll just see yeah, Here we go. We'll see how it pulls. All right, 1500, 2000, 2500, 3000. There we go. It's got a nice, consistent rev range. Turbos normally they have nothing, and then it's a bit of everything, and it just all happens at once. But this has a nice pull the whole way through. It's got a good note to it. Actually, I don't know what. What other 75 I have driven is Jamie's PVS. So that was the last rig rundown that came out and that had twin stacks and that was kind of a, a noise up top. But this has that nice deep grunt. Interesting actually, because Jace is 79, there was twin four inches coming out the bottom behind the cab. And then there was the PVS one that had it coming out the roof. And then this one's out the back. And this one is the least drony, I gotta say. So it'd be more comfortable. As again, it comes down to comfort. This is Ronnie's office. It's where he spends all of his time, so it's got to be comfortable. All right, back to the studio. <laughs> all right, so it's come to everyone's favorite part of the rig rundown series, which is the four challenges. Now, it's been a while since I've done one of these because it has to be a road registered vehicle. So I've had a few non registered cars recently, but thankfully, I'm registered. Thank you, are registered now. <laughs> and this has been a long time coming. I've been pretty excited to shoot this and do the challenges on Ronnie's car. So we've got do you remember what they are? We've got the four challenges. We've got a. I know there's one with water. There's water involved in one of them. There's a, there's a sprint. There's a sprint one. That's right. We've got a sprint. That's a hundred meter dash. I've been practicing that in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, just gear changing. <laughs> then there's the comfort challenge, I call it, and that's the one that's got the water that you're thinking of. Um, and then we've got the flex ramp challenge. Um, we'll either find something to flex on, or I've got a flex ramp back near mine. And then the economy, which we uh, filled up at the start of the day. End of the day, we're going to fill up again and see what it comes to. So there's the four challenges. I reckon we'll find somewhere to do the sprint. We'll kick it off with that yep. and then see how we're looking. Sounds good. Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right, so down here, it's time for Ronnie's sprint challenge. I've just put the mark on the ground here, stepped out 100 meters. He's all the way down the end now. <laughs> Before we got here, he's like, I'm just going to put a bit of extra boost in the tank. I was like, what do you mean by that? What are you doing, mate? Let's more get more boost. Yeah, more boost, mate. Oh, Ronnie, I don't know if that's going to help you, mate, today, but we'll see what happens. So basically, I'm going to drop the hammer. I've got a stopwatch. When I see his car moving, we'll hit the go. And then when he goes past that mark, hit stop. And that's about it. He's, he's calling me. I'll just put some boost 
in Land Cruiser. I'm just having a bit of a bit of a self prep talk at the moment. I want to smash some times here, but you know what will probably happen. Actually, I won't say because I'll jinx myself. But I might be a bit overzealous here and snap an axle on my takeoff. All right, ready in three, two, one. Go! I also smell a lot of clutch. <laughs> 737. That's pretty, that's what I expected actually. So the quickest is around a six and a half, but for a 79, that's up there. And a manual, keep that in mind as well. What did that feel like? I feel like I was sitting in one spot for a bit. Oh, I reckon it's got more. I just got it. It's they all say that. Driver error. Driver error? Yeah, I'm gonna try and do a slower takeoff. Yeah, because you stomped it and I smell clutch. Yeah, I might need a top of Alright, right, you get one more redo. Second gear low range. I'll try low range this time. Alright, ready? Three, two, one, go! That was 70 kilometers per hour in fifth low. <laughs> it was slower. Alright, so that's the sprint challenge done and dusted. How that feel? I reckon that was up there as one of the quickest 79s. It may have even beaten Back in Black. We'll have to check. Check the records. <laughs> so That's made my day. That would make it the quickest 79 that we've had on the channel. So now we've got the uh, comfort challenge. So we've got a bit of terrain in front of us. What's said A bit of a sandy... There is a few bumps in there, isn't there? There's a big bump at the end. There's a big bump at the end. So my motto today is first to last, right? <laughs> so if I lose more than 10%, I'm going to try and drain this thing. <laughs> I reckon. And for the first time ever, which I should have done years ago, I've put marks on it. So there's no guessing. We've got right up to 100%. And then you want to come down. You probably want to empty this thing past 50 down to the if 25. If you want it to almost. stay full, fill it with rum. <laughs> I'll make sure not a drop gets out of it. Carbon out of water. Radio, thongs are off the game. We're in low range. Are we in low range? Yeah, we're in low range. Let's do this. All right, so he's going to go up to his 50. There's a couple of sick bumps here. I'm hoping he just launches it. <laughs> no! No! Get it out! <laughs> it was like, woo! It's all ill fizzed up too. This makes it so much easier to record. 70 to 75, what's in between? Like 73? Should have gone overzealous. I saw a bit come out and I was like, nah, you're all coming you out. You did, you kept going. Yeah. You could have got higher than that. What are you doing? You could have taken know, it out. I, I could have taken it out. Alright, 73, we'll call it that. So now we're gonna go find somewhere to flex. Okay, we're here for the next challenge. We've finally found somewhere that has. Well, we went to the flex ramp place, let's be honest. So we're trying to find a bit of mound of dirt out where we were filming the last bit. But we thought, nah, let's do it properly. We're back at the uh, HQ here where we've got the ramp set up. So first time it's ever been on a flex ramp, this old 79. It's been lifted on a forklift, but this is a first for the ramp. So you know what to do. It doesn't sound right, does it? A Land Cruiser Wait, hold on a second. Ramp. You changed your shirt. Okay, yeah. let's be honest, it's a different day. <laughs> but we're doing this properly. <laughs> So we've come back another day. We're going to do the flex ramp today. And you're going up rear wheel and then watch that front. Yeah. I'll watch the other side, I guess, because that'll be the one that lifts. Lockers. What are you, is the locker on? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> the wheel came up a bit. I think you're almost off the ground there. All right, we'll go with that. So I need to mark it here. All right, so we've gone up to the uh, max flex that we saw, which is, I put a finger mark right here. 475. 475 mil. Yeah, it was 475 mil. 
Did he add 200 to it or something? It was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the greatest. <laughs> you might have beat my brother's Ranger. He got less than that, I think. All right, last thing to check out is the economy. So we filled up at the start of the day. Gonna fill up now and we'll see what that comes to. All right, we're pulling in after a day of sort of driving a lotish. We well, actually didn't go that far. We went 30 k's today, so we'll fill it up and see what it's used. Taking a bit of juice, mate. It's at 19.8 litres. What happened there? Litres per 100. 19 divided by 30. That's, something went very wrong. I know. 63 litres per 100. There you go. <laughs> I think I'll what happened is, it's because the, um, it's it, the it's, filler, it's it doesn't click. Tanks. Yeah, it fills two tanks and it would have like clicked and then drained into the other tank. Well, it's very hard I thought there's more in it before. Which doesn't make sense. We should just leave it at 63 litres per hundred, that'd be funny, yeah. <laughs> or not. I guess, I guess I won that one, didn't I? <laughs> That's how you win it, right? Smiles per mile. <laughs> 63 litres per hundred. Alright, there we go. Alright folks, so welcome back to our leaderboard for the rig rundowns again. Alright, so we're looking at Ronnie's times. For the first one, for the sprint, he got 7.37, which was the quickest 79 we've had so far, putting him in the third spot. Now with the comfort challenge, 73%. Now going in with the intention of getting the water to come out, I guess that's the kind of result you expect coming in second last there. Now, we've got the worst flex we've ever had at 475 millimeters. What is going on, Ronnie, with that one? And then a hilarious 66 liters per 100. That is what you get when you don't fill up your car properly at the start of the day, taking out the worst economy for the challenges so far. Guys, make sure if you enjoyed this rig rundown series, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more of these coming up. Let me know what car you want to see me test next on this challenge, and I'll see you guys in the next one. They say the definition of subscribe is to arrange to receive something, typically a publication, regularly by paying in advance. Please arrange to receive something typically a publication regularly by paying in advance by clicking the button below.